So in the last episode, we talked about adding a hover effect on top of some of our objects inside our new section. So if we were to hover on our new section down here, you guys can actually see that the text does actually increase in size. But what if I want to add a transition effect to it? You know, to kind of make it smoothly transition into a, a larger font size, or maybe I wanted to have a delay behind it so that it only changes after maybe a second. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to add a transition effect inside our style sheet. So for this example, let's go ahead and actually change the color of the boxes into red when I hover on it instead, because I think it's going to be a little bit easier to see once, once we do actually add the hover effect. So if I go into my style sheet and I find my hover effect, which is here, this is the part that increases the text size and I delete it because we don't want the text to increase in size. We actually want the new stats image to change into a red background color instead. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it below here and then change the path a bit. So we have class new stats image instead of P at the very end here. So now we can actually change the font size from 20 pixels because that doesn't make sense. We have a background that needs to change into a background dash color red and save it. So now if I refresh my browser, you guys will actually see that no matter where I hover on my new section, it's actually the, the black box that changes into red. So now instead of it suddenly popping into red, we want it to smoothly transition. So in order to do that, we're going to go into our style sheet and you might think that we have to change the styling or at least add the transition code down in the hover part, at least the hover code we do for the image. But we actually do need to uh, put it into our object, which has been man manipulated into a you know hover effect. So instead of the hover effect down here, we need to go up to the new stats image code and add the transition effect. So down below here in our code, we're going to go ahead and add the transition. So we're going to go ahead and write transition. Now there's actually, there's two ways to do this. Either we can write one line of code, which gets pretty long, or we can write multiple codes, which changes each thing inside the transition. And we're going to do both ways. So I can show you guys how it's done. So we're just going to go ahead and start with, you know, doing all the different properties or the different t types of code that goes into transitioning. So down here, the first part of code we're going to write is transition dash property like so colon. Now I, I should mention that transition is a CSS three effect, meaning that it's part of the new CSS system. Um, so you might not see the, you know, the color change into blue when we write it, that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It's just because it's relatively new and some code editors like this one doesn't know that it's actually supposed to be a transition thing or like a CSS code. So, now, what we can do here is we need to specify what it is we want to change. Now, we could say, well, we want the background color to change. So we could actually say background dash color. Now, but let's go ahead and do it a little bit differently because we do actually want everything to change. Like, let's say I have a width and a height and a background color and maybe some text. All of that needs to be changed when I hover on that. So instead of writing them out individually, like one line of code for the background color, one line of code for the text, we can just go ahead and write all instead. And you will actually see it turns blue. So it is accepted as an answer. So now that we have specified what needs to be changed, we can go down to the next line and say, well, okay, but how long do you want it to take to change? So we can say transition dash duration colon. And then you can either write it in milliseconds or seconds. So if I wanted to change after, you know, take one second, to change, I can write one S. If I wanted to take, you know, one second in milliseconds instead, I can write, I believe a hundred or a thousand. Don't laugh at me for this. Um, I, I do believe it's a thousand. So milliseconds and we'll actually take a second to change. Now, now that we've done this, we can actually go ahead and see what it does so far. If I refresh the browser, you notice that it's slowly smoothed into a red color, which looks a lot nicer than having, you know, it suddenly pop up. Now, one thing I should mention, you can also add hover effects or like transitioning effects and hover effects using JavaScript code. And some of you guys who may know about this, if you do it via CSS, if I do this really quickly with my mouse back and forth on all the boxes, you'll see that they don't change because I need to stay on it for it to change. When in JavaScript, if you hover on the object and go on and off, multiple times, it's actually going to start blinking 
as many times as you hover on it. And it's actually kind of, it's a fun thing. So I usually like to use CSS for this kind of transition effects. Now that we have the actual transition added to everything that we have changed, and we have a duration, let's go ahead and talk about the way we wanted to transition. Because there's actually ways you can change the way it smoothly transition, either by ease, ease in, ease out, ease in and out, depending on how you want to, if you wanted to like slowly speed up and then slow down once it gets to the end or how you want to do it. So let's go ahead and add that piece of code too. So we're going to write transition dash, and then we're going to go ahead and say timing dash function, like so. And then we can actually write either ease or we can write ease dash in, or we can write ease dash out, or we can write ease dash in dash out, or we can write linear, depending on what we want to do. So if I write ease dash in dash out, I don't know if you can actually see the change because I sometimes have a problem seeing the actual change, but you actually notice it doesn't like, it kind of increases a bit in size and then slows down again. And because of you know the duration of what we're doing here, we might not be able to see it as well. But that's actually different ways you can add the timing function to our transition. The last thing we want to add is a delay. So let's say I hover on it and I want to, you know, it to take a second before it starts changing. I can say transition dash delay colon and I can say one second. So now if I go refresh my browser again, you'll notice I'm going to hover on it and it's going to take just a little bit of time before it starts changing. I'll just zoom in for you guys. So you can see a little bit easier. I hover on it. One second and it changes. So there's actually a delay. I can, I can say five seconds and we're absolutely sure that it does actually happen. Refresh. One, two, three, four, five, and it changes, okay? Now, like I said, this is a lot of code to write just to do this. So let's go ahead and add a piece of code which will just be one line and it's much easier i think to do it this way now we also need to talk about something called browser compatibility because this right here as you guys can see i'm actually using chrome right now works inside chrome but what if i were to use a browser like internet explorer or filezilla or uh, uh, what do you call it uh, not filezilla but firefox or pira or something else this might not work because you haven't specified the you know, Sometimes when you use CSS3 code, you can't just use null browsers. And we need to specify some browser compatibility before we'll actually allow it to happen. So if I go ahead and delete all this code, we're gonna go ahead and write the same thing, but in one line. And then we're gonna add some browser compatibility at the very end. So I, I can actually show you guys how it looks like. So here we're gonna say transition, colon. We don't have to write anything else. Then we're gonna say how long, oh, no, sorry what object are we going to change just like last time and we're going to go ahead and say all space how long do we want it to take to transition well i want it to take one second space how do i want to transition it well i would like for it to ease in dash out space and how long do you want it to take before it starts changing now i need to note that you don't have to add all the parameters i could easily go with just this um, but just for the sake of doing this, we're just going to go ahead and add a delay to it as well. So we're going to go ahead and say two seconds, so we don't have to wait as long this time. So if I save this, go into my browser, refresh, you guys will notice after one second, or sorry, two seconds, it's going to start changing. So this is another way to do this. Now, like I said, browser compatibility, this right here works in Chrome. I'm actually not quite sure which browsers it does work in. We can actually look it up really quickly if we go to um, this website here which I had over my other screen here. As you guys can see, transitioning, if I zoom in for you guys, doesn't work on certain browsers. Well, I, I, I don't quite know which version of browser we're looking at right now, um, but we might have to add some other transition effects depending on the browser we're looking at. And of course, we want it to work in all browsers, meaning that we need to make sure we have all the different, you know, browser compatibilities for all browsers. 
So as you guys will notice, over here we do actually have something called Dash WebKit Dash, which is technically what you need to use for it to work in Chrome. But as you guys can see, it actually fixed that. So we don't have to do this inside this version of Chrome. Uh, the same thing with Mox, which is Fire, uh, Firefox. We also have Safari, which is also WebKit. And then we have Opera, which is another browser that some of you guys may not know, which is just an O. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our code and then we're going to copy this code. Sorry, I just wrote something. We're going to copy this code below here. Then before the transition, we're going to say dash WebKit dash. And now it does actually work on all the browsers that supports WebKit. So if we were to copy this again below a couple of times, I'm just going to go ahead and change WebKit to Mox, which is Firefox, and then to O, which is Opera. So now it's actually optimized for all browsers and it will work on all browsers. So if I save this, you guys will notice that there is no change inside our Chrome because it already worked inside Chrome, but we're absolutely sure now that it works in all browsers. Okay, so this is how you add transition effects. And like I said, you can change all these variables. We could also say width instead, and it only changes the width, which is kind of nice. Um, and this is essentially how we do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We might talk about browser compatibility a little bit more in a later episode. I'm not sure about that yet, but if you guys want to, we can actually talk about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.